Okay, wall calendars 11 by 16. These are our first ones we're going to look at. These calendars um, are nice and long, and they um, have so many fun ways that you can use them. So if you look at the one on the left, that's the Family Almanac calendar. And the great thing about this one, it uses basic art. So you don't have to have a premiere account if you don't want to. It's a great way to get people started using Heritage Maker Studio. And it's grid-based, so it has all these wonderful squares that you can fill in photos. You can add more embellishments if you want. Um, it's, a, it's just a fun design. The first few pages of this, the first month, has some photos, kind of like you can see the cover has photos. So you can see what it'll look like with photos, and then we just have the text for drop it in here. The second one is the Mare, Mare family, and this one's created by Brooke. Um, it's a very simple and elegant design. You'll see that it has a spot for a large photo and then three smaller photos. Um, and each month is a great way to capture either memories from that month, the year previous, or maybe it's the favorite photos from the year. You can take whatever approach you want with this. So those are our first 11 by 16s. And, and I want to point out, too, these are the template IDs. So if you're wanting to create one of these and start off um, as your base, make sure that you go and grab that template. Up next, we have um, some more wall calendars. And I want to point out that this one uses both a US calendar and a Canadian calendar. Um, it's the family holiday calendar. And you can see it's got this fun grid design again, um, very playful and fun. And on the left hand side is our US base, on the right hand side is the Canada. And the way you can tell the difference on this one is that on the 26th, there's an extra holiday that Canada has that uh, the United States does not. Um, so for our Canadian friends, we have a few designs that are done with the Canada um, calendars, or you can take one of the US ones, swap it out with a Canadian version. We do have grids available that you can swap out with. OK, now on later calendars. Um, this one shows how fun these are. They are now because you're going to hang it on your wall and later because you want to put it in your scrapbook or you can hang it um, in a frame on your wall whatever you want to do so you'll notice here on the right the march um, calendar we start to tear it away so there's a perforation at the very top just under the rings and then there's another perforation here at the bottom that separates the calendar grid so this 12 by 18 design separates into a 12 by 12 layout that you can easily slide into a page protector and then you are set to go so each month you'll have a fun layout that you can remember from so it does double duty calendar and then into your um, scrapbook albums here are two more designs. This one on the left is a great idea um, for motiv motivational quotes. I personally love to have quotes hanging around my house, my office. And so this is a great way, again, to have it up for the month. But then you can pull them out and use them throughout the year or use them in the coming years. Um, even the cover is a quote, so you can use that. And they have very simple design backgrounds so that the quote is the focus. Then on the right-hand side, we have another example of a fun now and later. And you'll notice that this one is very scrapbooky, has lots of layers and uh, spots for photos. It's really a fun, fun design. I love that wood background, too. And I believe Roxanne created this one for us. So if you're looking for something that's very scrappy, this is going to be a good one to get you started. Next, we have our um, desktop calendars. Now, these guys, at the very bottom of them, have a base built into them that allows them to stand on your desk. And you just flip it over each month. It has a wire binding at the top. Um, these samples are what we call uh, perpetual calendars because they can be used year after year. So you notice that they have dates, but they do not have um, any days of the weeks on them which is really nice because you can use it year over year. So for example, if grandma's birthday is on January 13th, you would write grandma on the 13th here. And then every year, you remember that grandma's birthday is coming up on the 13th. Put anniversaries, special occasions, anything that you celebrate year over year. And then you can use it every year, 2015, 2016, 17, and onward. 
So we have two designs. One is perpetual in nature, and this one uses some beautiful nature designs. So you'll see that January has a snowflake. Then April has some flowers. Um, the colors change as well as the designs. Then on the family dates list, this one uses some simple designs as well, but its only change is by color. So January has the blue bracket, and then the design in the background is blue. When you get to November, you see that it switched to green, and this little background is now green. So the design doesn't change, just the colors. It allows you to easily read whatever it is you've recorded on those calendars. Next up, um, this is a brand new one that Brooke took a little time away from baby Henry to create for us. It's the Simplicity, and it uses basic artwork. So it just has a lot of space for your photos with this little cute calendar off to the side and the month. So it lets you focus on those photos and really enjoy looking at your family or those special moments throughout the year. They're right there on your desk. Here's two more. On the left-hand side, this is the family holiday one that looks, it's taken the same components that we saw on the 11 by 16 calendar and made it into a desktop version. So you'll notice that the cover looks very similar and then we have our um, April one which is um, showing you that some of the different artwork. Then on the right-hand side, we have a corkboard calendar, and this one was quite popular, and it is a basic design. It's quite simple because it just has your corkboard background spot for three photos with the month. Love that it has these cute little push pins on it so you can make it look like you're really using a corkboard. Um, but fun design there. Now, wall calendars are 11 by 8.5. These are just your standard wall calendars. On the left-hand side, we have Bold Life. It's a basic calendar um, because it's using basic artwork. And uh, we're actually going to play with this one a little bit when we get into studio. Also, the Colorful Patterns um, is a basic design. And you'll notice that it has some fun backgrounds to it, lots of room for photos there, not a lot of embellishments, so the photos just really stand out on those. This is a brand new one that we haven't even gotten into the template gallery yet. Another one Brooke was, has been working on. It's a fun, colorful cork board. Um, and again, it looks like a cork board or a bulletin board that you would put your things on with spots for photos. Uh, you can put your journaling on here. Um, it's just a cute design, and so we're excited. That will be added sometime in the next few days. Then these 11 by 8.5. The first one is the Almanac Perpetual, and again, we're showing you um, some differences on these. So it's done twice. One is the Almanac Perpetual, which is on the left-hand side, and one is the Almanac Calendar. The only difference is the bottom half of it. So you'll see the Perpetual doesn't, again, have days of the week, so you can just write in those favorite things. And because it's digital, you can actually type in the information in advance, make them for everyone in the family, and then everyone has those special occasions for the year. On the right-hand side, it's a standard calendar with a grid, so if people want to use it to write their own information on it, they can. Um, but beautiful designs, either way you decide to go. So we are actually going to dive into studio at this point, and uh, Lisa is going to jump on and show us some things. So I'm going to turn it over to Lisa. You ready, Lisa? Sure am. <laughs> Okay, Lisa, hang on just a second. I'm handing it to you. Perfect. Okay, we good to go? <laughs> we are good to go. And while that's coming up, um, I have Chelsea. Chelsea, will you randomly select a name that I will announce to get 25 points for us? I forgot to start our time off with that. So hang on just a sec. Chelsea's going to give me a name. Janet Fortman, you are winning 25 points tonight, so we'll make sure we get that into your account. And Lisa, it's all yours, my dear. Awesome. Okay, so hello, everybody. I hope I, uh, I'm excited to be here. It's fun to be able to actually uh, go through studio. I, I work with customer service and talk to 
lots of people every day, but this is a fun little new adventure. So I'm excited to be here. Um, as Stacy said, this is the 2016 Family Almanac calendar. So one of those that comes in the perpetual or the almanac version, um, or the almanac. Yeah, that's the almanac calendar. Exactly. It's, I think it's just called the Family Almanac calendar, and there's the perpetual or the regular grid. So. Um, this is what happened. I've just pulled up the template and want to play with a little bit about this. Um, something that I love to remind people every day is that Heritage Makers is completely 100% customizable. So when you start out with a template and you want to make some of those changes, let's say you really don't like, um, for example, a background color, which I'll demonstrate, you can change that, um, change a photo, basically change anything you want on a template. So don't ever be uh, hesitant to start one if you want to make, if you don't like the specific colors or the exact layout, there's always um, options to change that. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up, for example, um, let me go ahead and pull up our calendar here. I'm going to go ahead and pull up this February view here. We're going to work on recreating this page today. Um, but let me go ahead and, so just as an example, this is our February page. Um, so I've kind of recreated this. You'll see that this background paper, I'm going to go ahead and redo this here. Okay, we're going to go ahead and work with January here. So January has this, I actually like this background color a lot, um, and so we'll plan on using that. But let's say you want to vary it up. Let me get my screen up here. Um, I want to go ahead and change this background color to be something different. Okay, my studio. Let me get my calendars all set up here. Um, okay. I don't know if you guys are seeing that too, but it looks like my <laughs> my computer's been a little odd today, which is not a good timing. Just a second, let me get it. I'm gonna go ahead and save and quit. See if I can get that to load back up here. So you might run across that if you have that's the joys of computer sometimes. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and load this calendar back up. So like I said, what's great to remember is that everything is 100% customizable. Um, so I'm gonna work a little bit to, especially with these great calendars that Stacey was showing, uh, that the grids are already, um, there's so many different grid patterns, they're kind of a trend now, you'll see just on a, a lot of different things, but they're fun, fun ideas that allows you to display a lot of different pictures on your calendar especially. Um, so I want to kind of play with that and to show just the flexibility that has with them. Uh, so coming back into studio here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and click on, let's play with March. Okay. So here we have our March calendar. Like I said, if there is, you know, if you want to go ahead and change the background paper to a different one. Like I said, we'll see if my computer works. Might have fun, Stacy. Hold on just a second. Okay, here we go. So in my projects, I'm going to go ahead, uh, actually it's the art collection. So let's say, what's great about the art collection is that if you just click on art collection, which is in that bottom options down below in your options here, um, what it does is it features um, different, different collections of art um, each month. Usually it's either has to do with the season or any of the newly released art. Um, you can also, let's say if you know you want to make, let's say, green for St. Patrick's Day, you can type in over here, um, just type in the word green and be able to search for it there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just click on, for example, this Lovebirds collection, like this one. This is the one I used back on February. In our art collection, it's great because it does break it down into embellishments, alphabets, paper, and textures. So I'm going to go ahead and look at these. It's great about, and get our a little bit of an expanded view over here. Um, you can swap out for a different color. So a lot of you may know this if you're familiar with Studio, but those of you that are new, um, in order to customize anything in Studio, what's the key thing to learn is how to drop and swap. Um, so when an item is locked, if you select an item, it has that pink border around it, that means it's going to be locked, and it has the ability to then swap out for another item. So for example, if I want to then come down here, to bring up and wait for that little green plus sign and click drop art here to swap and now that's changed that background paper so if I want to do a little bit of variety from page to page that allows that to be a little bit more flexible there um, so that's a good option let's go ahead and leave that here you can change that if you don't like it you can always come to undo up here um, or you can also then go ahead and just swap out for a different color if you want to play with it 
as long as it's locked. So where did you, will you um, tell everyone where you're finding Undo at? Yes, at Undo, it's a, my best friend sometimes, it's under Edit up here. So the File, Edit, View, these are some tools that often like, we forget when we're in Studio, but Edit, and you just click Undo, and now it's going to swap back to that original. Then you should be able to keep clicking Undo, and now it's back to the original. So you can keep, keep clicking Undo if you do want to uh, go back. So let's say I want to go bring this back. I can bring it back in. Any other questions? Oh, yeah, and if you have, definitely have questions, let type them on in, and I can pause and go from there. So, um, so that's a great reminder. As you can always swap out the background paper, even if you want to swap out, let's say these little green guys here. If you want to swap them out for a different color, you can do that same process from bringing something down below. And let's see if I can make something. Let's say I want to make it this green instead. Bring it over. Wait for that little green plus sign. Let go of your mouse, and now it's this color green. So that's a, definitely that tool is amazing. You can do it with any template, whether it's a photo placeholder like these ones are showing, or if you do start with a template that already has photos in it, it's the same thing, the same process. If it's locked, then you can swap it out. So let me go up for, like I said, I love these different um, templates with the different grids because it allows you to put so many different photos in. If you come down to your My Photos, go ahead and open up. I'm featuring my cute little nieces and nephews tonight on my projects as an example here. So as an example, we have you can come down to your photos and be able to find which projects you want to do. Um, what's great about these is regardless of the photos, you can see you can go ahead and I'll go ahead and just do a couple examples. Let's say I want to bring up this photo here just as a background, kind of match the green, same thing, bring it up, swap it out, and you start placing, replacing those placeholders for your own photos. If you realize, oh, you know, I don't like that one. I hope I didn't lock it. Bring it back down. Make sure you select it. You always have to select it before you swap it out. And then go ahead and drop it back in. So you can make those changes as many countless times. I think with mine, I really change mine a hundred times over before I actually get satisfied. But um, so what's also great is to remember that these grids are really flexible. Even though it might be, you know, it looks like you have to stick with this outline which a lot of the times I'm super grateful just for the our amazing design team that does create these templates because I uh, sometimes lack that creativity. But let's say I want to go ahead and feature I have these cute pictures of my nephew. Um, and I'm going to go ahead, let's see, I want to go ahead and switch these out here. If ever, I've used these photos on a different page. So if you ever want to know what those little green check mark is down below in your photos, that's a nice reminder to know, oh, hey, you already have this in your project somewhere. So Good to remember um, if you are designing and you have tons of photo and lose track. So let's go ahead and, um, for example, this little photo, if I want to, designing. This is a sweet little photo of my nephew discovering he's holding a caterpillar for the first time. And so I really want to feature that photo, let's say, on this project. But it's so small, and there's really not much of a larger um, spot. You know, these pictures are horizontal, but this is a portrait layout of the photo. So what you can do is then go ahead and customize these to be your own. Um, like I said, you can. this is your toolbox here. Um, we'll be using that here. Like I said, it's, everything is 100% customizable. So in order to move something that's already locked, as you see here, if you unlock the item, you can go ahead and just drag it off and move it off of the design area. What I'm going to do is I'm going to recreate his photo really large here instead so I can see it. So as and probably those there you know, so I apologize for repeating, but it's always good to remember that you do have the options here when a photo is locked. You have the toolbox option over here that you can unlock the photo over here. You can use this. And then we also recently, just over the last year, um, added this toolbar, toolbar option as well. So you can do it right here as well. It gives you those few options, um, kind of personal preference of what you end up using. I usually do a combination of the two. Okay, so for his photo, I'm going to go ahead and just take a placeholder here. Um, the copy and paste option is a wonderful feature to use, especially when you're trying to recreate something, since we're going to basically creating our own photo placeholder. Because if you see, if I just bring up his photo, it's going to be square. I want to match all these same elements from the original ones. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that off. If ever you need to delete something, just click delete off of your on your keyboard. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab one of these placeholders. You always have the option to either copy and paste up here, 
You can also use the shortcut on your keyboard with Control C, or you can even right click and copy something that way as well. So there's a lot of options. I'll go ahead just for visual effect, go ahead and click copy and paste. I'm going to go ahead and grab one of these photo placeholders. And I'm just going to approximate where about how big. Uh, the key to stretching these out to kind of fit, you can either pull it out just like this, or if you want to customize the shape of it, you hold down your shift key, you can manipulate the size of this. So this one actually, if you just expand it without the shift, it works pretty nicely. But you'll see that way then you're dealing with the photo placeholder with the nice rounded edges that are really similar to everything else. So now um, I'm going to go ahead and use with the grids as there are a lot of different lines. You want to make sure it lines up correctly. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit closer. You can see here, oh, you know, it's not lining up. I can't really tell. I want this to look really clean and cohesive. So a tool that I love to use is up in the view. We're going to go down here and show our ruler. This is great when you're trying to work with different elements and line them up so that they do match specifically. Um, I usually start with this, kind of get a good approximate. OK, it looks like I'm getting towards that arrow or that line here. So but this one's kind of, so you can kind of gauge, oh, I want to make this a little bit smaller. Like I said, using that shift key while you're stretching on the sides allows you to manipulate it um, side by side. So just to make sure that this is completely kind of lined up how I want it to be, I'm going to go ahead and back up here. And what you can always do is then um, you can always use R layout options over here. While an item is unlocked, you notice if the item's locked, you can't click on those layout. So if you unlock it, this allows you to then um, be able to go to our layout tool. And an option that I love using is that align to option. Um, and it lets you allow, if you hover over your mouse, you can align something to the group of items. You can align something to the first item that you select or align something to the page. Um, and you can align it either vertically or horizontally, all right here. The distributor we, you can use, but it's definitely more advanced than that. And I don't tend to use it as much. I usually end up using the align and the spacing options. So I'm going to go ahead and I just want to make sure that this is aligned up the same size as this. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock this as well. And when you want to select multiple items, we're going to go ahead and hold that shift key down. Oh, it's going to go ahead and select both of those items here. So now I can make sure it's on the two, and I want to align to the right. And that's going to bring everything out. So you see that one shifted a little bit. Um, that way, that they're exactly lined up. And that way, it looks a little bit more cohesive. So that align option is great when you're doing these grids. Um, and if you want to align it to the bottom here, to the right, to the center, depending on what you're aligning to, depends on what you really will really use. Um, Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go back and just click off that show ruler so it goes away. I'm going to go ahead and lock this again so I can then swap out. That's the main purpose of this. I wanted to get that cute picture of my nephew to be right here instead. So I'm going to go back, grab that here, and now that's the feature picture of this page. So I took something that I wanted it, instead of having to be small, you don't have to compromise what you really want. You can always change it. So now I can come in here and put this other one in here and kind of do a little layout of that. So, any questions, definitely send them on our way. Um, Lisa, will you way? explain the advantages of using leaving things locked? Why, why do they start out locked? And then um, what things can you do while it's locked and what things can you not do while they're locked? Totally. That's a really great question. So, the good thing about being locked is one thing I automatically think, because I'm a little clutchy sometimes. Um, Usually I'm not, anyways, I am sometimes clumsy. So sometimes if you're designing, I don't think I locked, let's see if you accidentally, um, if I'm designing, I'm clicking, and all of a sudden, oh my goodness, I unlocked, I moved it. And the unlocking, I'm going to undo that. Um, when it's locked, you can't move it. It's going to be stuck there. So number one, it's a precaution to make sure that things don't move. Um, the other thing is, like I said, that drop to swap feature. You'll see that when the photo is unlocked, that little drop to swap goes away. If you lock that item, it allows you to swap it out. So you can't move or swap anything out if it's unlocked. If I just drag a picture on top, it's just going to go right on top. So delete that one. If you lock it and then come here, you can go ahead and drop out the photo. 
Um, another thing you can do, let's say if I dropped out this photo, I'll, um, I'll go ahead and mention this real quick, but if you click on the photo here, go over to your toolbox or down here in your toolbar, you have the adjust option. And that adjust option um, allows you to then bring down so you can see his little face again. You can then lock it. So it's great if you want to then zoom in, you increase the scale, you can decrease the scale. Um, you have to be careful to decrease the scale, scale. You don't want it to then end up with edging. See if I decrease it too much. It's going to not fill the whole photo. So you zoom it back in. So that's really a great feature with the lock is you can adjust then what's showing on the picture. For example, if I wanted to zoom in here, same thing. You can increase the scale here, bring it down, move it over. Um, and all that you can do while it's locked. If that item is unlocked, you'll see that that adjust turns into the ability to crop. So if you do want to crop an image, um, basically if you want to manipulate the size of it, of the photo itself, you unlock it. But if you want to keep that same positioning of the template or photo you already have, make sure it's locked. So those are really the big things, um, is making sure, you know, just safety so you're not accidentally moving things, and then also with that ability to convert it um, to something else into a different photo. Okay, so, will you give just that, any more uh, explain it that? one more time? Explain one more time, just do the bullet list of if it's locked, it can't move. Yep. Yep, so, so it just, can't move. Yeah. Um, you can swap out the photo for another item. Um, so if you want to swap it out, whether it's a photo placeholder or your own photo, um, you can when it's locked, you can swap it out for another photo from down below in your photos area. Um, you can also swap out, that goes also as well for art pieces. If you're pulling something from the art collection, you can swap that out as well. Um, and then also you can adjust the, um, while it's locked, you can adjust how the photo layout is in within that um, actual template's positioning. So when it's locked, yeah, that position's going to stay. When it's unlocked, you're going to manipulate that position of that exact item. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. It's a great question. Um, usually when in doubt, I usually always leave things locked unless I really am seeing I'm not able to manipulate it. Unlock it, you can play with it or move it. It does need to be unlocked to be able to move something off to the side like these guys are. Um, okay, so another thing, I'm going to go ahead and go to, I think that was it on this one. If I was recreating that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save and quit out of this calendar. Love, love this calendar. It's super cute. I'm going to go up to this other calendar here, that bold life calendar that was also featured in our um, in the beginning of the class as well. I'm going to let, let, load this up. As stated, this is a basic template. Um, and so oftentimes, you know, the basic templates and the basic art, they're super tasteful, really classic, um, and really flexible. And if you do have Premiere on your, your account, you can also then, if you do have your favorite Premiere artwork or paper, you can always swap those out at any point as well. So just like how we did before. So I'm going to go ahead and get my project loaded up. And I'm going to play with a little bit of our actual calendar grid area. Um, what's great about calendars and any project for that matter is remembering how great it is that there's so much flexibility with the um, opportunity to personalize it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pull up. Let's see here. Go ahead. We'll go into our grid for a little bit. So this is an example for February. This is cute. I love this calendar. We'll go ahead and start here. Um, this template, what's great about this, I love that they have the cute ideas to put um, a quote for each month. So you'll notice March is a different quote, February, April, you know, every month. Um, and what's great is I love it has the idea of if you have, let's say, like a family motto or in my family you have tons of inside jokes or favorite, you know, favorite movie quotes, things like that, you can. This is just a text box. And by double-clicking on this text box, you can then change, if you want to just delete everything, Come in here and say, oh, the one I've heard recently that I like, it's a good day to have a good, uh, good day. Um, something like that where you can change it to be whatever you want. Like I said, super fun to be able to make it a great gift idea to, um, like I said, my family is super into movie quotes and inside jokes. How fun it would be to have a calendar 
with the, each of one of those for every month. Kind of gives you a good laugh. Um, another one is this calendar. It usually comes with just a blank slate. What I've done here is started to then personalize the dates um, for this month. So what's fun is that um, you can then add, and I'll recreate this, show you how I did this, but I've gone ahead and added pictures of my niece and nephew and put it on their birth date. Um, it makes it just fun to be able to have on the wall and makes it, you know, you catch more of a glance rather than reading through whose birthday it is. So, um, in order to do this, just use from down below, we have our text boxes, and you have the option, these just kind of give you the format, what your text box is going to come out looking like. I just want a simple title. So you can come here, and I went ahead and played with the fonts, which, like I said, up here in the toolbox is your best friend when you're designing. Um, you can see that right now this is in the Garamond um, font. But let's say I want to go ahead and change it to the, and you can just hover over these. It'll show you the different sampling of what those texts look like. So if you're not sure which one it looks like, you can then you know kind of go from there. I think I chose the arrow on this other one. So that way it's now this font. You can go ahead and change it to, you know, our anniversary or whatever you want it to say. Um, I've already done that and made it a little bit smaller here for, uh, for example, my niece Lonnie's birthday. I'm going to go ahead and just get this out of the way. Um, we'll just pretend my anniversary is on the 6th. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and what's great is once you create one event, it makes it really simple for the rest of the year. Um, rather than having to create a text box every single time, creating a new, bringing up a photo every single time, formatting it to be the same size, like I said, the copy and paste is your best friend sometimes. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to unlock this, and I'm going to recreate what that, just to show you how I did that. Oops, I don't want to unlock it. Okay, so for example, this is Lonnie. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste. That way I, don't, I already know the formatting of it. My nephew's birthday is on the 15th, so I'm going to go ahead and change this to Sam's birthday. So really easy to customize it. I can then bring it up here. And so if you want to lock it, you can lock it there. So it doesn't move if I accidentally click on it. See, oh, it's too close to the 15. Unlock it. I usually don't lock it until I'm kind of done with this area. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that unlocked for now. I'm going to come over to her little picture. I'm going to copy and paste. And bring this over here. Now you want to make sure you don't forget and leave two pictures of her and have it labeled as her brother's birthday. So make sure. Now we need to switch this out. So we're going to go ahead and if I locked it here, it wouldn't be able to be, or if I unlocked, left it how it is, I can move it and I can't swap it out. So I need to lock that item. And I'm going to come down here to my photos. And come down here. And find a little picture of him. you're designing, you can always move this up and down here. It's nice when you're looking down here, trying to go through your photos. I'm going to go ahead and find, I think I was using this picture. Let me use this one instead. Say, okay, bring it from down here, drop, and swap. So now I'll use this little picture. Let's say I want to, it's kind of far of him, so I can use that toolbox. Click adjust, kind of scale it up here. And it's cutting off his head, so I just want to bring that down and click done. Um, well, we see here, this is actually a good example. You see, you can see a faint white line that will print if you leave it like that. I just remember things. The good thing, it's 100% customizable, but if you mess up on it, that's how it's going to print. So it's always good to double check. So now I've fixed that. That was just with the adjust. It was too far down. Um, okay. So let me see if that's going to... See, if I bring it down here, that's how it's going to look. So you always want to make sure... When you're using that adjust, you can kind of see it faded past that little purple bluish line. So, all right. So that's a great way. Now, throughout the whole calendar, you can either copy and paste to a different month. So if I want to go ahead and lock this now, I'm going to use copy on my keyboard. I'm going to come to March. And I'm going to go here. Oh, somebody else's day is here, or this is whichever day. You can paste it. So you can copy and paste from each calendar uh, page. So it's not... You don't have to go through each one and, and create it. So it's a good little shortcut. Another hey, thing Lisa? while we're here is not only can you... Yeah, of course. Can you um, copy and paste the text and the photo at the same time if you know you want to put the photo and the text 
in different months. At the months. same time? Mm -hmm. So if you select yes, both of them and then so, do, okay. So let's go back here. Good question. We have our group copy and paste we had um, years ago. We have, you can go ahead and select those. You'll see kind of the blue around it means it's been selected. So we're going to go ahead and click copy. Come to March. I'm going to go ahead and click paste. So now the same item here. Now I can do that instead of this text box. Oh, I done selected. You don't select them together. That's why it was separated. But that way you can even have it so it's one key thing. So if I messed it up, you can still click paste and grab another one of them. Oh, her birthday is actually on the night. So definitely it's a great question. You can group, copy, and paste. So if you don't want to have to do it again, you can always bring over that set together so it's already kind of in that set format. I would just lock these guys and then swap it out for whatever photo is for this new child or person in your family. Okay, will um, you walk through yeah. the steps of how you multiple selected those things? Of course, yes. Good question. Come second nature <laughs> for me. Okay, so if you select the first item that you want to select, and I kind of mentioned it before. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this toolbar right now just so you can see better. You can always get rid of it by clicking either the toolbar or the toolbox. I'm going to go get rid of this toolbar for now so you can see. Um, so I'm going to select this first item. And then uh, you're going to go ahead and hold down the shift key while you select the other items you want to select. So the key is the shift. By selecting that, if I just try to click one or the other, you'll see and that's me without clicking the shift. It's just going to select them one at a time. As soon as I click that shift after clicking the first and I click the second, now you can click copy and paste and it comes together. So it's so definitely a great question. Does that help explain that? That helps. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Um, also something fun to do just to make it kind of cutesy, I've added this little owl. I'll show you how I did that. St. Patrick's Day. If you don't have pictures necessary, necessarily or if you want to make some cute things just on the corners of these like some of the templates or have things that are related to the holiday, you can come down here. What I did for that St. Patrick's Day, you can go ahead and just click a key name. I'll go, let's go ahead and put Lucky. If I can spell. Um, if you click on Lucky. Helping my internet work. Okay. Here we are. So, like I said, when you pull up the selections of your, um, when you search in the art collection, it always comes with categories. So you can look at the collections. I'm going to go ahead and just click on the embellishments. Um, I saw this cute law. I thought he was cute. But you can do, you know, let's say I want to do this one instead. You can just drag him up there. And oh my goodness, he's going to be huge. You'll see when it starts to load. Huge owl. So you can then take him off the side. Just grab that with the little mouse. Oh big mouse, whatever kind of mouse you have, <laughs> grab that on the corner, grab this little guy, and then you can have them, um, you know, if you want to kind of keep seeing be the focal point of the page, you can have it expanded, or if you just want it to be on the 17th, you can make it small. It's kind of your personal preference. So it's just fun as an idea to be, kind of get your creative juices there, and um, if you'd rather put just birthday balloons by on somebody's birthday, you can do that and search birthday. Um, so there's just a lot of fun things you can kind of play with. Um, whether that's photos or different um, art pieces like these, it's really fun to just kind of look through. So that is for this. I'm going to go ahead and do a fun little option we have. Sometimes, as you see, I want to demonstrate this. And I think I put it in my other project here. We can go see. This is a cute idea. I wanted to kind of go back to the grids real quick. Um, this is a cute artistic um, detail that some have done, especially for those of you that have already been in the studio for a little bit, um, it's sometimes it's fun to be able to learn something new, or even if it's, it's pretty basic, so even if you're a beginner, this is kind of a fun tool. They've started with one picture, but divided into two boxes, so it gives this cute look. So I want to show you how to recreate that. Let me go ahead and I'm going to go, uh, I guess I could do it in here. No, I'm going to go back. I think we, yeah, let's go ahead and go back. Have a, so I'm going to go ahead and show how to recreate that with your own photo and how it actually is created. Um, it's actually a lot easier than you think, and I was intimidated when I first had to learn, but it's actually just using that, um, that adjust option that we learned when you have a photo locked. You can kind of manipulate where the photo is showing. 
So I'm going to go ahead and go back to here. Let's go ahead and do it in... Okay, okay this one works. Okay, so here's a really cute um, little layout for another calendar page. Let's say I want to go ahead and use this area here to do that same effect, have a photo showing on both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and go back down here to my photos. And let's go ahead and choose here. I'm just going to use this cute little picture of my niece and nephew. If I can find it real quick. Okay, here it is. Okay, so just to show you what the picture looks like on its own. This cute picture, it's really vertical up and down. Like I said, I want to make it more of a focal piece rather than just one of these little photo placeholders. So I want to try to do that same effect with this top and bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this to get off the way. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is you're going to go ahead and drop to swap on both the same photo on both of these. Okay, it looks duplicated, but we're going to fix it. So, key to here is we're going to be using that toolbox a lot. Like I said, the items are locked, so it allows you to see that adjust feature. Go ahead and click that adjust. I'm going to go ahead and increase the scale a little bit so you can kind of get more of a bigger picture. Let's do here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this photo basically to the top. The tip top, like I said, you want that photo, you'd be able to see it right above here so it's not cut off. And I'm going to go ahead and bring this right here. Click done. Kind of see what it looks like. Now you see right here, obviously, now we need to adjust this one down here. I'm going to go ahead and actually bring this up just a little bit. Okay. So you can kind of start to see her little fingers. Now we're going to come down to the same photo. What's great is you can see how this kind of shadowing effect is going to kind of help you the layout to make sure and say, oh, you see how it's she's smaller. I forgot to increase the scale of this. So I'm going to go back and see what scale I put this at. So I'm going to come back to this top one, click adjust. See how the scale gives you these numbers? What's great is then if you're trying to scale something else to the same size, you know what to scale it to. So 36.5. Go ahead and click done. It's going to lock that one up again. Now I'm selected the bottom one. Click adjust. And I need to go up to 36.5. I think it was. Yes. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and use that. See how you can kind of see where that photo, if it's over here, oh, if it's too far over. See how I'm just watching her little face to see where the shadows stop. Oh, it's pretty good. Okay. Let's go ahead. I usually just kind of hover over a little bit till it looks like a normal picture. No, my hands are shaky, so it'll be a little bit. Okay, let's see. Okay, that's pretty spot on. You see how it's kind of shadowed there? I'm going to go ahead and click Done. And now, if you zoom in, now even her picture, even her little fingers are exactly lined up. So it looks like now the one picture is forming two. So it's a really fun idea, especially if you have a tall photo. You can also do the same side to side. Um, it's great because you can then, you know, just make it more of a creative, fun little feature to it. So, any questions on that? Do you want me to go over it one more time, or are we good? We don't seem to have any questions on that one, and uh, getting rave reviews about how cute that is. Oh, isn't it cute? It was, and I can't give, it's my photo cred to my sister, but cute little niece and nephew. And it's just fun to be able to see that the layout of, um, just gives it a little bit of a variety. Like I said, the balloon one that we showed earlier, Super cute, and they did that same thing of just using that adjust tool, um, and it's that same one. So the same picture, just just depends on where you're using that adjust. So um, let's go ahead and let's see here. Okay, let's go ahead and go back to. There's questions there. I go down to the bottom half of this calendar here. Um, so what's great is, uh, like Stacy had said, let's say this calendar it looks like this doesn't have any specific dates like um, U.S. or Canadian holidays on them. Um, and so, you know, I really like having those different grids on it, or I'm not a huge fan of this text. What's great is you can swap out these grids just like you can swap out a photo. So I've come down here to the art collection again and use that tool, even by just typing in the word calendar. Oh my goodness, can't type. Okay. Even by just Clicking the word calendar, you'll see where it pulls up automatically all these 2016 grids. 
Um, there's so many different ones. These are for our little desktop calendars that we talked about. Um, these as well, little desktop corner calendar grids. Um, let's say we wanted to make this one. Oh, that's a calendar grid, but you'll see as well. This is for 2016 calendar um, for Canada dates. And then here's the U.S. one. Go ahead and open this collection. What's great about these is it comes with, actually looks like this might be that exact grid from here. So I really like this. If you scroll down in the collection, it gives you a couple options. Looks like this collection has about four other options. So let's say I want to make, well, maybe that's all just two options. Um, let's say I want to make this calendar grid this one instead. So a great option for that is to then, we're going to use that same feature. If I see where I brought it up from down below. Okay, now, let's see, this one kind of has like a shadow effect. There might be something behind it as well. Let me go ahead and um, move this here. Sometimes selecting around or zooming in can help if you can't quite click on it. This is an example here. You can unlock it. Let's go ahead and move this off to the side here. Okay, yeah, you see this? So when I passed it over, you see there's actually another grid already behind it. And each template you'll find when you're customizing your own template, each one's going to be a little bit different because somebody designed this from scratch. So each one's going to be a little different. So know that if you realize what the heck's going on, I'm not, you know, I haven't seen that before. That's because these guys were super creative and, and did two calendar grids to kind of give a different effect. So let's see if I select this other one off. I go ahead, actually, we'll probably just leave that one here and redrag and swap that. I'm going to do that instead. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this other one I've added on top. Go ahead and lock this one up again. Like I said, zooming in. And with the calendar grid, since it's such a big piece of art, sometimes it takes a minute to kind of grab that art again. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. All right, we're going to try it again now that we kind of see that there was two grids behind it. So I'm going to select this one again, make sure that's on that same area. I'm going to bring it down a little bit. I'm swapping out. It's really great to kind of get that bigger, like zoom out a little bit so you can see what you're doing. And if it doesn't show up right away, this is something I've learned as well. Um, if you bring up here and you're not seeing that little drop here to swap, bring it over just to the side and you'll see it show up. Sometimes for large pieces of art especially, I'll see that. Okay, and now we have this one instead. So, um, just like I said, because it's 100% customizable, you might need to do a little bit of adjusting, like this title box fit the other grid, not this one. So, you can unlock that. And oh, it looks like we might need it a little bit taller. So, I'm going to do that same tool by using the shift key while I hold it. It'll allow you just to expand one side. If I didn't hold the shift key down, going to make the whole thing bigger, which isn't necessarily bad. It just kind of depends on what you're doing. Um, so it's always good to know if you just want it to be a little bit taller, just hold that shift key down. And that way then it gives that, um, that perspective here. You can also change, let's say it's kind of hard to read these little gray letters. You can do a fill color of different colors. So if you want to make it black, you can leave it black. If you want to change it to be white so it kind of has that contrast. Um, you can choose what you want to do there. So, any questions about that particular swapping out the grids? Good? Nope, we're good on that. Um, someone did ask about if there were little calendars you could show prior and next month, um, and they're not designed for that purpose, but those little ones that you'd use for your desktop calendars, you could easily put those, you know, next to the name of April, or you could put it in the empty boxes. So you know how on some calendars it says uh, November, in this mm -hmm. case it would be March, and mm -hmm. then it would show you May as well. So you could use those little tiny ones that you're pointing out, the desktop ones. Exactly, and that's such a fun, creative idea to do as well, because like she said, let's say you want to go ahead and do, uh, let's see, May. You can kind of play with that then to bring it in. Oh, I'm going to undo that. That's what happens when you don't lock something. I accidentally select it. Okay, I'm going to lock that baby. Okay, so yeah, so that's a great option as well. Like you said, you can customize it, and that's such a fun idea. Um, now you can come in here, and you know, if you wanted to add that, it might be a little small, but 
on a certain day of the week. I mean, this might not work in this exact format. But yeah, you can put that off to the corner so you know what's coming up from last month, this month, etc. Um, so definitely a fun idea. That's a great option. But you can really customize it. Whatever you think of, it really can be done in Heritage Makers. And if you can't figure out how to do it, then you can always call customer service or talk with your consultant and uh, see, you know, get some advice on that. But usually if you want to make it happen, there's a way to do it in Studio. Um, so... Will you show that collection uh, yeah. again? What was the name of that collection that had the little guys? This one right here? Yep. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and just go back. I found this from Calendar. I'm going to make this bigger so you can see. So when you type in Calendar, I think it also will pull up if you type 2016. Um, any kind of key things like that. You can kind of see little previews here. This looks like that desktop calendar size. Those little ones were in this one. It's called the... 2016 blank calendar grid to number three. Uh, so not too creative on that as far as remembering it. But if you come here and go calendar, you can see those little um, those little grids here. When you select it, you can click open this collection, and it has all of those here. So kind of fun. It could be even cutesy and artsy on you know a greeting card or anything like that. There's a lot of fun flexibility you can do um, just by finding things like that, bringing them up there. So. Um, okay, so definitely something you can remember that way. It's always good. You can swap out, like I said, the calendar month, whether you want it to be um, for, let's say, uh, also just as well, we're kind of doing flexibility on calendars. Um, this manage pages area is a great way to be able to reorder these. Let's say you want to, um, instead of giving calendars for Christmas or the holidays, you want to wait till you have the, the um, pictures from December in order before you buy them. And oftentimes, at least if you're like me, it takes me a little bit to kind of perfect my project. So let's say I really don't get, I don't finish my calendar till January 20th, and I'm going to be giving it to my mom next week, and January is going to be over. So why design for January this year? Um, what you can do is then go into your Manage Pages, and this is where you can, in any project, you can swap the order of your projects. You can't move the front cover. Um, or if there's a copyright page on the project, you can't change those, and you'll see there's a little pink box around it indicating that. Otherwise, we can change, move January down to, if you scroll down here, we can move January to be the end of the month if you do want to swap it out. Just dragging those, scrolling down. And that way, then January is the last month, so that when she gets her calendar, February will be the first one. And then I'll be able to then uh, then it'll, the calendar would end with January. So remember, you can always start with the calendar, um, you know, really at any time of the month, swap it out, and we just need to swap that grid for a 2017 grid rather than a 16. Um, so you do that same process. You'd search for that. I tried to search right before. I didn't see a 2017 calendar grid yet. But So if they're not there yet, I know we'll be getting them soon for that very reason. Um, but fun to be able to go through. You can then swap it out that same process we did just so that the calendar matches them with January of next year, or the following year, I guess, at this point. So definitely something to remember. Like I said, everything's 100% customizable. It's my favorite line with Heritage Makers. So um, one thing as well, so we're wrapping up here. I want to show you just as referred to in the now and later calendars um, as well. We're going to go ahead and this is a cute little one uh, template by Brooke as well. I'm going to go ahead and pull up this one here. Um, just wanted to show you where that perforation when you're designing is going to be very, very similar to what we've been looking at today on the regular 11 by 8 and a half calendars. Um, but what's good to know is that even it's really great because it, this design guide around our all of our projects, definitely take the time to read those little, uh, these little guides because it helps. It gives you little tips and it tells you where safe areas are. Make sure you don't have any white edging on it. And if you zoom in here, this big for everyone to read. Um, here's that perforation line. So it's to, it gives you that instruction so you can tear it off here. So anything below that line, this will be on that bottom half, and up here will be that top. So you can do like this is your 12 by 12 page. So um, just something good to know of you're designing it the same way. You'll see how most of these calendars end up having just a piece of paper up here so it's easy to swap out the top half, just like how we did before. Let me show that real quick. Let's say I want to change that to 
I'll revert to this Lovebirds collection because I think it's cute. Um, okay. Oh, I really zoomed out. Let me get in here. Make sure you guys can see both ends. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here. That same thing. I'm going to go ahead and let's say I want to make it this cute little pink color. Same thing. You come up here. Oh, can't really see you. It's a good example. Something. Sometimes it's good to just zoom in a little bit, readjust it so it's in the center of your screen. And this might be a background paper that's stuck behind layers here. Okay, bad example. Sometimes it's always good to know if you can't swap something out right away. Um, just like how traditional scrapbooking, if you're layering pictures on top of background papers, we have that same layering effect. And didn't mention it before, but down here, these are your best friends when you're playing when you're playing in studio. This is bring the front, bring forward, bring backward, send it back. So let's say I want to, if I can't get this to swap out on top of all these, that's good. So you can then take this. Actually, it looks like this is pulling up the text box. Go ahead. Well, I mean, for time's sake, you can always definitely move it forward, like move it to the front. Let's say I couldn't get this to swap. I'm going to move this to the front, lock it. Go ahead and swap it out. Oh my goodness. Why is that awesome? See, if we select it here, it's actually showing this as a text box. So somehow, this is something where it's a learning curve to see how is this project designed. So if it doesn't work right away, don't get frustrated. A lot of the time, it's just a layering issue, which uh, maybe not just an issue, but just learning how it's created. So you should be able to then, let me go to a different page, just for time's sake. If you're not sure what you're selecting, I sometimes copy and paste it to make sure, oh, yep, I'm selecting the paper. So I'm going to go ahead and just select that again. And like I said, if it's not working, my computer might be having issues here. Um, let's go ahead and bring it to the front. Lock it. Okay, something might be going on to my computer because obviously this is, if you find that something isn't working like we've been doing, oftentimes it's just your computer having an issue. So um, I'm going to go ahead and swap out of this one. Anyways, that's probably a horrible example of what I wanted to do. But now in later calendars, you can swap out specific to the top half and the bottom half. So any questions about that? Or we good I'm to pretty sure that everyone appreciated the fact that you struggle with those things as well as the rest of us, so thank you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, of it's course. Real it's life. not always <laughs> remember you're always working with computers, so you never know what's going on and a lot of the time it's just that sometimes when I just restart it and it works just fine. And honestly I have no exact answer sometimes for it. But if you really can't figure it out, it's one you can always call customer support as well. We can help you. So anyway, I think that I'm not sure if there's anything else anybody wanted to go over, but I don't want to take too much time. I think I haven't seen any questions come up recently, so I think we are good for right now. Awesome. Well, I think um, if there's anything else, I don't know, Stacey, you want to go over our other items that we have here? I can keep yeah, going. Yeah, if you want to send it back to me, and I have a couple of things to show as a wrap-up. Of course. Let me get this back to you, make sure I can work this right, just a second. Okay, I think it's back to you. It should be back to me now. Let's see. Yep, try it in the studio. There you are. <laughs> okay, so Thanks. we want to show you just a couple other ideas. Thanks, Lisa. Those were some beautiful Beautiful things that we can all try. I, I'm so excited to try some of those things. So these last couple are um, some different approaches to calendars than the standard calendars. And this first one uses basic artwork because it's pretty straightforward. Um, and it's an 11 by 14 print that Brooke took and made this fun grid so it looks like a calendar. So it's like those big large calendars that are just flat. You don't tear off a page. You don't turn the page. You see the whole year at a glance. So that one is using 11 by 14 print. Then we have brand new car magnets. And these guys are 12 by 18. And let me tell you, they are fun. We've had the one that says the Richards family up on one of our um, walls for a while. And we have used the dry erase markers. 
you can write on them, you can leave it up, and then it races off and you can start all over again. So we're showing you two different versions here. One is for the month, so you can schedule in the things that are happening that month. The other one is by week, so if you want to just do a week of it at the time, uh, you can write in what you're doing for that week. Um, but these car magnets are very strong. They're designed to hang on a car, so they'll hang on your refrigerator just as well. So if you're looking for a little bit different approach to your calendar, this may be the option. Okay, I want to show you um, some artwork that uh, you could um, show, or that you're going to be seeing coming up soon. Um, we didn't get any designs created with them, but we're so excited about these. Uh, and I'm just showing you two of them. There's some other ones coming as well. This first one is a fairy tale Christmas loving, and it has some beautiful, rich reds and golds and greens in it, your standard Christmas colors. So many fun papers and embellishments, and oh, it's just beautiful, beautiful collection. So we're excited to share that one with you. And then this one, you know, it's fun to design and non-standard Christmas colors. This one is called Enchanting. It's more wintry, so you could use it later on in the year. And in fact, some of these are generic enough, you could use them all year long. Um, but we're very excited about this one. And um, I'm going to back up just for a second and show you that this, A Fairy Tale Christmas Loving, is a basic collection. And then the Enchanting is a premier collection. So watch for those coming out in November. They'll be available November 1st. Okay, we have two more people we're giving away points to. And uh, one is Ruth Iverson, and the other is Vicki Lewis. So Ruth and Vicki, we will get you 25 class is going to be holiday cheer. So in case you're wondering what could holiday cheer be about, well, of course, the holidays. We're going to show you all sorts of fun things you can do for the holidays. And that class is going to be Thursday, November 19th. So mark your calendars. Um, if you registered for this one, you should automatically be registered for the next month. Uh, this is being recorded, and I will try and get that recording up tomorrow, but it may be Monday before we have it available. But uh, there will be a recording so you can go back and look at all the fun things we showed you this evening. Thank you so much for joining us and have a wonderful evening. And we'll see you around the web and our neighborhood. Have a good night, everyone. Bye.